The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Samuel Archibald Arrington Hicks Crawford is going to be our guest at the break. So that'll always be a lot of fun. We're going to start out like we usually do, taking a look at the DAX, and then we'll switch over to the FTSE. Both of these markets are very similar. They've been in uh, uptrends. They're getting stronger and stronger. And as you can see by the DAX, that uh, we've had a little bit of an ABCD pattern happening uh, as we speak. And then if you'll look at the uh, picture on the um, FTSE, it's almost there, but not quite. Now, both of these markets are still going higher, so we're going to see uh, how this is going to end up. Uh, sorry for the show being unable to be on yesterday. They were putting in the new uh, production facilities there at uh, TFNN, and that's part of the problem. We didn't have an Internet connection, so everything's up and running good now. So we'll see what's going on. Now, folks, there's something really big happening, and since most of you uh, are out there, in trading land, I want to share it with you. Now, this is my 10 cents worth, but let's just take a quick look at this. This is the E-mini S&P. The Dow looks very similar to this, except that it's not as strong. The NASDAQ, of course, made new highs. The Russell 2000 did not. But, folks, I want you to pay attention to this chart because you don't see a chart like this uh, very often. If you were to take this chart and turn it upside down, uh, I, I would tell you to buy everything in sight because this is four major ABCD patterns coming in around the 2835 to 2850 level in the E-mini S&P. That goes way back to February. Four ABCD patterns. Uh, you don't you don't see that uh, very often. I mean, I I was shocked when I was doing the newsletter this weekend because I I couldn't believe it. I could see four of them there. And very clear ones. So this is what's interesting. Now, if you'll take a look at what happened back in January, we had a full moon and a lunar eclipse. And what happened? Uh, we had a 10% correction that went down into the 12th of February. Now, here we are over a full moon and lunar eclipse, uh, as we had here on the 27th of July. And whether we're going to get a 10% correction or not, we'll have to wait and see. Now, there are people out there that are like J.P. Morgan happens to be one, and I think there's one other company is talking about the possibility of a correction. That's, that's always a possibility. All I'm bringing to your attention here is the fact that you have four major uh, ABCD corrections up into this level, and it's... Uh, you know, we've had a pretty good break off the top, you know, not that much, just about 60 points, actually about 55 points. So not too much happened so far, but it's still early. If you look back in January, the same thing happened. We had a big break, and then we basically uh, stayed at the same closing price for two days, and then we had three really bad days, you know, back to back. Whether that's going to happen or not, I don't know, but, you know, markets tend to repeat themselves so sort of pay attention to that, because if it happens, you could see one heck of a correction at this level. Several people have asked me uh, why uh, the big break in Facebook and the big break in Twitter. Folks, those markets were very, very uh, overbought, to say the least. They were looking for any type of an excuse to, to sell off. Now, will, will this be a major bottom? In Facebook and Twitter, I don't know the answer to that. Twitter stopped at the old highs down around that 36 level, and Facebook stopped at the exact 78% of the range for the year at a dollar 65, not a dollar 65, 165 dollars a share, and we've held that so far. We got as low as um, 170 and change, I believe, yesterday. No, just a little below 170, but as long as we can stay above 165 in Facebook. Uh, you know, it's got a chance to go, but with that big gap like that, that's a, that's very negative. That usually means uh, a change in the continuity of thought. 
Now, I've had, I had a question from one of our uh, listeners over the weekend, and they asked me uh, questions about my time at Drexel, and they asked me, what was my most embarrassing moment at Drexel Burnham Lambert? Uh, that was real easy. It was 1975. It was about 10 o'clock in the morning, and I was sitting there in the office, and I was chatting with one of my uh, customers, uh, Ty Andrews, and in walked three guys in black suits, the boys from the FBI. And they uh, put me in handcuffs and arrested me. And everybody in the office was laughing because they were big on practical jokes at Drexel. Everybody thought it was a joke. And they were laughing and joking. And pretty soon my boss uh, realized that there was something, you know, seriously wrong. And so they started asking questions. And these guys wouldn't have anything to do with it. So they put me in handcuffs. They took me out the door, put me in a car, and drove me down to 2750 Wilshire Boulevard, which was the uh, offices of the FBI that are still there right across from the uh, 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 cemetery there, the um, Veterans Cemetery. And I was there for about three hours. Uh, they didn't say anything. And then pretty soon, uh, in come an attorney for Drexel. And it was a big mix-up. What happened was there was somebody in Santa Barbara, California, that had opened a Drexel Burnham Lambert office with a Larry Pesavento running it. Everything was false. They had all, all kinds of false papers, but what they had done is they had taken in about $50,000 in selling gold from people. Of course, they never delivered the gold, and that's where the whole thing happened. They caught it very, very quickly. Well, it was uh, in the news a little bit, but Drexel Burnham being the first class group that they are, uh, they paid the $50,000 back to the people uh, that were there, but this happened over a very, very quick uh, period of time, and boy, it was, uh, it literally, I mean, I really thought it was a joke until we got into the car and headed towards the Fed building, because then I, then I realized that something had happened. They wouldn't tell me what was going on, but uh, they never, they never did catch the guy that, uh, that was impersonating, uh, me. The only thing they knew is they he looked exactly, exactly like Mel Gibson. So, boy, they picked a dead ringer on that one. But anyway, the uh, the most exciting time for at, during Drexel, uh, there were so many of them uh, that I, I had to pick one, and I'll do that after the break. And I mentioned it before, but, uh, you know, I'll, I'll try to give you some of that. Uh, uh, someone asked a question, did we have a dress code at Drexel Burnham? Actually, we did. Friday was uh, was uh, uh, a day where you could just wear dress slacks and a, and a dress shirt, no polo shirts. But you didn't have to wear a tie on Friday if you didn't want to. A lot of people did, and not many people, you know, were casual. And at that time, I I didn't really have a casual mode like I have now. But uh, that was it. When anyway, we'll get back into some of these other things, and I'll, I'll cover the most one of the most exciting and fun times for me at Drexel. And believe me, I could spend probably three months just talking about that because it was probably the best six years that I ever spent in this business because when you go back and look at it, it was uh, it was really an exciting time uh, to be in the markets with gold and silver and inflation and, you know, T-bill rates at 13%. It was quite a bit. Now, remember, we're going to have Arch Crawford as our guest at the break, and so we'll have some, you know, good times chatting with him. We'll take, pay a few bills, 877-927-6648. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan. Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profiles So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. 
Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance, David White's daily market letter, gives you trade recommendations based on David's proprietary power law vector indicator that put the odds of success overwhelmingly in your favor. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price for each stock and option trade. David combines his years of trading experience along with his background in technology and computing to offer his subscribers his take on the markets on a daily basis. Every trading day by 9.30, David publishes his morning issue of the Path of Least Resistance, along with updates sent out throughout the week whenever there is new, actionable trading information. All new subscribers receive a 30-day, no-questions-asked money-back guarantee. To sign up for David White's daily trading newsletter right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com, and you'll find the Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, make this really quick. Uh, they ask one of the most exciting things that happened when I was at Drexel. Uh, when my kids were little, we didn't give them gifts. We gave them little coupons. In other words, if they were good, they got a coupon to go to the movies or to have a friend over for a sleepover, buy a new pair of shoes, something like that. And one of the favorite coupons was, you know, they got to pick a wish of anything they wanted. And my daughter, uh, for one, I was in uh, Chicago at the time. And uh, the uh, she wanted to go to the Hollywood Cup uh, races on Sunday, which is equivalent to the Kentucky Derby uh, in California. And uh, it was really hard to get seats and everything. But uh, I was able to, to get in, and I uh, because of the Drexel box that we had there, that was always filled on Saturdays and Sundays. So I had to go through the Mater D, who we knew quite well. And Ruben was able to uh, set me up at a table in the Gold Cup room, which is where the celebrities were. I wasn't expecting to go there, but we got there. She was all dressed up in a beautiful little dress. And uh, they set us at a table with friends. And one of the folks that was there was Robert Wagner and his wife, Jill St. John. They had brought a guest, and his name was Paul Horning of the uh, uh, Green Bay Packers, number five, and also John Forsythe. Who was the voice behind Charlie's Angels and a very, you know, famous actor from Dallas, of course, was there. Anyway, um, what was nice is when I was at the table and we showed up, uh, th those actors called me by my first name, and my daughter thought that was really cool. Joe St. John, my daughter was 13, took her into the restroom, and she had no makeup at on. When she came back an hour later, she was fully made up like a like an actress in a movie star. This was a 13-year-old girl transformed into a 22-year-old girl in a matter of uh, uh, of minutes. And the, my daughter was the proudest I've ever seen her. That's included when she graduated from Berkeley Magna Cum Laude, Harvard, and also Johns Hopkins. She was never more proud than she was uh, on that day. She always remembered that, and it was a lot of fun. But when she got home, uh, all hell was to pay because when the ex-wife saw that, she didn't feel very happy, but Laren sort of said, hey, stop uh, raining on my parade. But anyway, that was one of them. There were a whole bunch. So let's talk about this gold market, folks. The gold market has something really big going on. I've been trading gold since 72, and um, we have an interesting situation where all of the stuff has been moved basically to the December option. I don't understand why this is happening. We've got an open interest there of about 350000 
The next closest open interest is October, which is usually a huge month. And uh, it's not. It's only like uh, 45000 So we got eight times as much volume in the December as we do in the other options. It doesn't make any sense with carrying charges being low because interest rates are very, very low. The price of gold is relatively high compared to that, but I don't understand why this is happening. So the option you want to be watching is watch December gold. If it starts increasing uh, on an up move, then there's players coming in, but that's not happening. You can see today gold uh, you know, rallied $10 and gave it all back in just a matter of a few minutes. I think that was partly related to what happened in the euro because we ran into really strong resistance in the euro at that 117 uh, 45 level. Well, that means anything or not, I don't know. But we need to pay close attention to this gold market, given the fact that we're we're setting right at those spots where it's going to be uh, interesting to see if it can move out of this area for sure. Now, uh, another market that's uh, that's looking looking. I want to bring this up to your attention too. This is the XAU on the gold. I want to show you that this is not acting well. Also, uh, we're making new lows, and that's not a good sign. Remember that old level is around 1210 in the spot gold, but we could go below that by just a little bit and still be okay. But if we get below uh, $1,200, uh, that's going to be a, probably a, either the biggest bottom ever or it's going to be the start of an acceleration to the downside. The silver is still acting okay, but uh, you know they haven't turned as of yet. There, there's just nothing there that makes you think that that's going to happen. Now, there's a very strong probability that we have a possible bottom in the uh, the soybeans and the corn. As you know, we were looking at those triple bottoms that we had, the three drive to a bottom pattern. Uh, we were fortunate enough to buy the corn. Uh, that made us uh, well over $1,500. The beans made us well over 3500 And they're still uh, starting to go up. So we'd be ready to buy them any pullback. I don't know anything about the tariffs. All I know is that these two grains are acting relatively well, and the wheat is acting extremely well. So um, even though they're having tariffs, people have to eat. We've said this all along, that that's, uh, that's pretty much what goes on. Uh, Mr. Z, uh, I, I, uh, I have to disagree with you on that. Uh, on always rolls from August to December. Uh, I always thought October was a pretty big one because October was much bigger than August. But, you know, I'm wrong, but who knows? <laughs> I'm wrong a lot, but pay attention to that December. That's a big one. That uh, that's where the players are, and uh, believe me, there there are a lot of players in there. So uh, keep an eye on it because if you see a big increase in that gold open interest on a big up day, that's going to be the start of it. Until you see that, that has not happened yet. So all the things that we're watching here could easily, you know, turn to mud. And uh, going below that $1,200 level was certainly not. Uh, Certainly not a good thing to do, and we, we have certainly, whether that's going to do or not. Let's just take a look at gold here on the spot gold. This will be the August, and you'll see, you know, where we're trading this morning. We're down around that 1217 level again. Uh-oh, one second here. I got the wrong picture. Just one second. Let's just get this up here. There we go. And uh, we're still looking at that potential of silver making $15. Uh, announced we might even go below it a little bit, but those are really big numbers on the long term, you know, weekly charts that we've looked at so many times here in the gold and silver platinum still holding up uh, relatively well. But that open interest is going to be the key until that starts to move. That means the players are not coming in. And boy, when you've got that many, when you've got an open interest of 350,000, which is about eight times more than the others, you know, that's really. Uh, that's really a big thing. Hold on, folks. We've got uh, something going on right now that's making the things jump around. There we go. We're getting a nice move in the market. It must be something happening. Uh, that's what we wanted to see. And uh, we just made a 382 retracement in the S&P 500, if you have an interest in that. And uh, the gold just came down. We've now dropped uh, 12 $13 from the high in gold. We still haven't quite taken out that low yet, but we're getting very, very close. Let me double check just to be safe because I'm in December now, and I want to make sure that the August has not done that. And I just want, not that it means very much, but let me just get this on here to just double check to see where we are. Oh, that's going to be really difficult because we have... Uh, we have switched over to December now on everything here on the E-mini, and that's going to be real interesting to see what's going on here. 
Uh, no, we did not take it out as of yet. So we'll see if that's going to be the case here uh, later down the road. Okay, let's move on here uh, for a few minutes. And then we got, to, oh, my gosh, we've got a break coming up already. And then we're going to have Arch Crawford on. That's always a lot of fun. So if you have any questions, please call in 877 877- 9276648 uh, those are the main things i wanted to cover the s&p the gold the soybean oil looks real interesting if you get a back off in soybean oil look to buy it and keep looking at those december hogs at 46 folks they moved a nickel the first time they're going to move a lot more than nickel the second time 8779276648 Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're talking with Arch Crawford of Crawford Perspective. Sam, are you there? I am. Yeah, I am. I am. I am. I am. My name is Sam. Sam. Uh, folks, we call him Sam because his friends call him Sam, but his name is Arch Crawford. Arch, tell us about the gold market. You seeing anything in here? Um, it doesn't look that great right here. Um, I'm waiting for it to, to stop going down, form some kind of pattern, and then start breaking to the upside. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, we said in the letter um, last month, that it had broken um, a light support line, and it 
and and will it break further? And it did break further. It broke the heavy support line. So uh, I'm cautious on it right now, although I will remain long-term uh, positive on uh, I, I just think that everybody should have a certain amount of gold uh, and pass it down to their children and grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> I have I happen to agree with that one. Arch, uh, you, on your newsletter here, you talk about the new highs and new lows in the market. You want to tell the folks what you're looking at here and also tell us about these eclipses that we're looking at. Okay, well, the, the, the new highs, new lows are... 52-week new highs and new lows on the New York Stock Exchange. Um, and they are a very good internal indicator of what's going on. And the chart on the front of the uh, letter shows that uh, among the, the new highs minus the new lows, <clears throat> it's, it's not recovering that much as it looks like in the price. So that's mm -hmm. the basic thing. Now, there's uh, a, a rule of thumb that when the new lows have been low and they rise up above 40 for three days running, mm -hmm. it's a short-term sell signal. And the, the weirdest thing, the last nine days, we've had two above 40 and then not, two above 40 and then not. Two above forty and then not. <laughs> mm -hmm. So wow. it's flirting with a sell signal, but it looks like somebody's trying to keep it from giving a sell signal. Well, I gave a sell signal with the new letter anyway. Mm -hmm. Now, Sam, uh, we have a question from one of our listeners uh, about the effects of these eclipses that we've seen because we had a lunar eclipse in January. Uh, and also the uh, accompanying full moon. And then we had another one here just recently, and they look very similar. Uh, what, what's your feeling on that? Well, this recent lunar eclipse is the tightest, longest, and most powerful one in a century. So that's a little bit more than uh, just another eclipse. Mm -hmm. So... Um, and it was also conjunct Mars, which, of course, is the god of war. Mm -hmm. And uh, it also is uh, the fire sign. So it's the, the, the uh, Hawaii volcano. It's the California fires. And, uh, and it's the, uh, the Greek fires. The Greek fires killed a lot of people, too. The Greek fires, that's right. Yeah, yeah. you're right there. So there's been quite a bit. Wow. Killed a lot more, actually, than California, I think. Okay. What do you feel about the bond market here, Arch? Um, it's been pretty flat. Uh, it was going along its 200-week uh, moving average from uh, December 16 to uh, December 17, and then it broke the 200-week moving average and went down to a long-term trend line, and it's been hugging that trend line uh, since February. Mm -hmm. It's a little below it right now, but it's not as much below it as it was in May. So uh, it's basically flat, and... Uh, it could break below this trend line and then do another uh, leg mm -hmm. down if interest rates go up that much. Mm -hmm. But the 50-week um, the, the moving average is pressing down from above, suggesting that the higher probability is more downside. Mm -hmm. Arch, in your letter, you talk about uh, the importance of August 2nd, 3rd, and 4th where we have virtually no planet-to-planet planet aspects, which is, you know, uh, those P-index days that we follow, and you'd have those. They, I don't know what it means. It means it's something like a magnet that's out there, but uh, I've always found those to be very powerful turning dates. Uh, is that what you're seeing here for August 2nd, 3rd, uh, yeah, and 4th? It's, it's, as I said in the letter, I said it's either quiet and placid, or large movements without much volume or interest. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. 
And then, then we have a we have a solar eclipse on uh, August the 11th, don't we? With that'll be a new moon and solar eclipse. Yes, it will. The, uh, Any uh, fact oh, that it's Mars is in Capricorn does that mean anything? The um, August 11th one is exactly 19 years to the day of a solar eclipse in 1999. Mm -hmm. It's um, a, a complete metonic cycle mm -hmm. of, uh, what I say in the last letter, 200 and some, 235 lunar months. Mm -hmm. um, and as I remember, I mentioned in the July letter that uh, the NASDAQ doubled right after that from August to its high on, I think it was March the 10th of 2000. Hmm. And I said, well, maybe it'll do that. I don't think so, but it's possible. But it may be just the opposite this time with the top here. Mm -hmm. so well, what, watching, what's your feeling I'm, here I'm with the fact that, you know, market. Facebook and Twitter gave up, you know, you know, 20 percent of their value in a matter of hours? Uh, and does that mean anything on a on a market to market basis? What do you think? Uh, to me, it does, but you know, I don't follow these uh, social media stocks. You know, they didn't. I've never done anything on social media, and I don't plan to. But to see them give that much up, that that's been a change in the continuity of thought. People are thinking differently about these for the first time in a long time. It looks like. Well, uh, that's what I uh, <laughs> exactly what I think. <laughs> yeah. That oh. is. Uh, I, I said in the last letter, I think. Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, in this letter, I said that the, the high the other day was possibly a, a, a top, and I'm actually betting on it. Okay. Um, the, now, do you do that by, by puts and calls, or do you do it with futures? How do you, uh, how do, you do that, Arch? I mean, when, well, you're, letter, when, you're, when, you're, recommend, when you put a trade on, uh, do you use uh, futures, or what, what is it that you're, that you're using? In the, in the newsletter... I give the uh, what you should do with the Dow Jones and with the S and P, and I let people make up their minds what they want to actually use. The Nasdaq has been the, of course, the best performer on the upside and the sharpest correcting item in the last what four days or so. Okay. And, Can you uh, stay, hey, Arch? We got to pay a few bills. Can you stay with us a few more minutes? I believe so. Okay, thank you. We'll have Arch Crawford of Crawford Perspectives back on, folks. 877-927-6648. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank Bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade Thinker Swim is now at 11 a.m. followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. 
see the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts and keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, brought to you by Nadex, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're talking with Arch Crawford of Crawford Perspectives. Arch, um, yeah. could we talk just a little bit about the uh, crude oil market? Because we've had some pretty good moves around 10% back and forth here recently. What are you seeing in crude oil? I'd like to finish my previous thought about the, the, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Arch. Go right in, ahead, my friend. That's in, why in I get paid so... <laughs> okay, go <laughs> go ahead, it, buddy. Uh, has dropped down to what is both the 50-day moving average and a long-term trend trend line, actually two long-term trend lines that are crossing here, so today it's bouncing somewhat. Uh, I don't expect it to last, but it's a, uh, at least a bounce off of where it's supposed to bounce from. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a, it's a position to um, take greater short positions in the general markets. Mm -hmm. And what okay. you said, what did I trade? Well, um, I give the recommendations for the Dow Jones average and for the S&P average, and because almost everybody follows one or the other, and uh, I have not. I, I give the NDX, which is the 100 Nasdaq 100 top honchos, and uh, a chart and an, and an explanation in the newsletter. But I don't. Um, follow it to give buy and sell points mm -hmm. now, what well, was the question the main thing is, is you know you're looking at two different markets when you're looking at the nasdaq and the rest of the market i mean my goodness it's been made new high several times where we've not been able to do it in the nyse you know or the dow jones and if you go back to the old days of the dow theory you know the transportations and the utilities are still lagging but i guess people don't follow the old stuff anymore uh -huh. Is that is well, that about I, right? I think I'm with you. I do keep keep uh, track of some of the old stuff. But one of the things I noticed the the Nasdaq was the strongest. The uh, Dow Jones has been the weakest, mm -hmm. and the SPX has been the middle. And uh, mm -hmm. the SPX and the Dow Jones both made rising wedge patterns. They broke down in uh, late June, and the SPX rallied right back up to the bottom uh, of the two crossing where they where they cross uh, the wedge uh, bottom and top lines crossed, and it went right up to the uh, first of the um, the wedge lines, kissed it, and has dropped back. And I think that is a perfect by the book sell signal. Mm -hmm. Well, that makes, the, makes the good Dow sense. Jones has not even made it anywhere near back up to those lines. Mm -hmm. So, in terms of you know uh, traditional market uh, analysis of one type and the other, the Nasdaq has been the strongest up, and they will probably be the strongest on the downside too. 
Makes good sense. Okay, now can we move over to the uh, oil market because we've had some pretty good swings in the in the oil. You're moving four or five dollars a barrel every three or four weeks. Uh, what mm -hmm. what do you see here longer term in the crude oil, uh, Sam? Well, I see a very steady uh, rise. Hmm? It's making higher highs and higher lows, and I see no serious problem with it. It's been in a corrective phase for the last two or three weeks. Uh, but it's not breaking anything technical downside except uh, what it's doing now the last two two weeks is it's forming a triangle pattern, mm -hmm. uh, getting narrower and narrower out to a point here where we are now, and it's right on the 50-day moving average as well. So it's a critical turning point possible whether it will, uh, you know, re return to the trend and make another new high above 75, or if it cracks down and goes down to the 200-day moving average, which is about 63. It's, it's, well, it's debatable right here. Yeah. Well, speaking of debating, we just had a question pop up here in Tiger TV about the political environment. What is your feeling on politics right now, Sam, and what's going on? Anything that you can see astrological that could lead some light on all the stuff that we hear coming out of Washington? What's your feeling there? My feeling is that we've been headed towards socialism heavily for the last um, few decades, and that's been uh, an unhappy direction to me. And the unexpected win of Trump, he seems to be taking us back to our constitutional republic. And I'm rather happy about that. Mm -hmm. so some, people, hope, some people certainly aren't. <laughs> well, a lot of people are believing the, the uh, propaganda of the press, and the major press is, is doing a 24-hour number, hate Trump, hate Trump, hate Trump. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because he is threatening the elite controllers in Washington, uh, and as I say, turning us back away from socialism, which I think is their plan, not our plan. <laughs> uh, we had Bill Meridian on of oh, five or six months ago, and he said the month of August, because we have these eclipses, uh, has some negative connotation with Trump. Do you see anything like that at all as far as his chart and what it looks like, or do you follow that at all? I wrote last month that um, these things would be hitting his chart and that the, uh, his protective services should be especially careful during the eclipse period, the entire period. Wow. Well, no matter what it is, it's certainly going to be interesting, that's for sure. Arch, we have another well, question. It is an for interesting one of our times. <laughs> <laughs> that's the curse of the old legend. Uh, Chinese. One of our listeners has asked us, if you had to do one trade that you like right now, what would it be? Um, well, for myself, I have some QQQ puts. Mm -hmm. I don't okay, that's recommend short to NASDAQ. options in my newsletter, except mm -hmm. once um, there was really horrible planetary aspects into a, um, an expiration date. And I said, uh, if you have some extra money laying around, uh, put some, buy some puts on Wednesday, because it's really terrible looking astrology the rest of the week. And um, what happened was the, the Chinese uh, devalued the yuan, and the Dow went off over a thousand points. And then Monday, it was off worse. Yeah, I know some of them can really be crazy. There, uh, speaking of currencies, uh, uh, what, what do you think is happening with the uh, RMB? Uh, is it uh, getting ready to be devalued again? Maybe up to nine or ten or anything like that? Um, it's being tightly controlled as they can, but it's still. Um, 
I think Trump is accusing them of making it weak on purpose. I'm not sure it's on purpose this time, but um, I don't follow it really closely. I do look at the Shanghai market every morning before the our market opens because yeah. it does have a leading quality to it lately. Hey, Sam, thanks for joining us, my friend. We'll have you on again soon. Arch Crawford of Crawford Perspective, folks. You can see his information at the TFNN website. Thanks a lot, Sam. Thank you. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last Last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I posted a chart, a recent chart here, a 15-minute of the NASDAQ. And as you can see, uh, we completed an ABCD pattern. That's the first one from the high that we made last Thursday. Uh, went up to just a tad above the 61% retracement. If we get above that uh, uh, 20, excuse me, 7280 level, then it could go a little bit higher. But right now, it looks like it's just in a uh, corrective mode. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, regarding the crude oil, we did hit the exact 61% retracement over the last five days trading. Uh, I posted that in the room this morning. You can see that was right at that uh, 7037 level. That was the exact high. We're now trading about a buck and a half under that. And we're looks like with the movement down that we're seeing, we're ready to uh, attack that 68 level uh, one more time. And once we get below that, we could be looking at our original objective, which is around $64 uh, in the crude oil. That's looking at the daily. 
and where the pullback could uh, could possibly be. I think the most important thing uh, that we're looking at this week we is the fact that we had that multiple A, B, C, D patterns in the E mini S and P. Uh, you just don't see that very often, folks. And if you like A, B, C, D and you like Gartley, uh, this is one you should pay really close attention to because um, there are four of them up there, and uh, that's that's highly unusual. And in fact, not very many people will even see them because they don't follow, you know, the work of Gartley. And that ABCD pattern is the basis of why markets go up and down. They can only do three things, up, down, or sideways. And as you can see, they all came together at that uh, 2850 level. So the, And it, it happened at the time of the lunar eclipse and also the the full moon. And then also we had the Mercury. So we had a lot of things happening there. Remember now, Mercury will be in retrograde motion until the 18th of August. It's in there for 21 days. So that would be uh, down three weeks. So a three-week correction in the market, much like we had in January. It went from the 29th of January into the third week of uh, February. So pay attention. 877-927-6648. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! <laughs> 